Hello and welcome to Alternate Dimensions Zendikar Rising set review. Uh, so this is the last video uh, of this set. We're going to be talking about the multicolor cards, the colorless artifact cards, and the non-basic lands. Uh, if you're new here, my name is Brad. I'm the owner of Alternate Dimensions. Um, it's a um, game store in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, we deal in uh, Magic the Gathering, um, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, um, board games, um, role-playing games, and accessories. Um, so let's dive on in. Let's, um, so uh, first up are the multicolor cards, um, Akira Fearless Voyager. Um, so a three, three for three is uh, our, our our good stats. Uh, when you attack a when you whenever you attack a player with one or more equipped creatures, you draw a card. So you get a little card advantage, uh, obviously if you get that trigger. Um, but it also has a protection ability uh, where you can pay a white and unequip an attachment from a creature you control. Um, to basically tap it if it's untapped and then give it indestructible to end the turn. Um, so the red white um, warriors deck has a sub theme of e uh, equipment and this one fits right in with that. Um, we have you know obviously in this um, in this, these color pairings, you have Maul of the Skyclaves, um, and you have a card like Embercleave. Um, you've also got there's a there's a common red equipment that gives plus two plus zero as well. Um, so there's several uh, there's there's several at, at the common level, and there's also a couple of colorless ones uh, in this set particularly. Um, so I, I ended up seeing this, this creature in play on one of the SCG versus series, uh, videos. And I will say it impressed me more than I expected. Um, it seemed like a lot to put all those together. Uh, and that, uh, this, this guy could put in some work. So it, if you're in those colors, if you're in the 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 theme or the idea of equipment, uh, it, it's definitely worth putting this in your deck and and trying it. I think you'll end up liking it. Now, the question is, uh, yeah, you'll probably see a little bit of standard play if that deck seems seems to be viable, right? The question is, will we see any eternal play? Um, That is an interesting question. Obviously, in modern, there's much more powerful uh, equipment, uh, but a three-three for three is well outclassed, unfortunately. So, um, if I were going to guess, Pioneer would be the only other format where it might see some constructed play, uh, with the exception of of Commander, of course. All right, brush fire elemental two mana one one with haste, can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less, and then has the landfall ability where it gets plus two plus two for each land trigger. Um, so this is fine. Um, the can't be blocked uh, ability. It seems weird on this, right? Um, You've got a 1-1 one, one that can't be blocked by anything power 2 or less. So it can't be blocked by a 0-4 zero, a zero wall or something of that nature. It's got to be blocked by something bigger. Um, and then even if you get a couple of landfall triggers on the battlefield, it can only get up to a 5-5. Five, five. Now I say only a 5-5, five, five, but... Um, I 
I think what's weird about it is the second line of text. It can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. Um, you don't see that. You don't see that a ton on small creatures, right? You usually see that on a bigger creature. So, I guess they're betting um, that you're going to get the landfall triggers. Um, now, if you can make the mana work, um, and you're in a landfall deck. Um, you want cheap and aggressive, uh, so this this fits both. Um, now I think, and I'll be honest with you, I think this creature plays out better on turn three. Um, where you're playing them out, triggering landfall, and then swinging a 3-3 th three, three haster with your one drop. Um, or with your one drop and your two drop. Excuse me. It's been a long week. Um, uh, you could also uh, play it uh, Gilded Goose on one, uh, then play this on two, and play your land to trigger and get in for three so um, I guess there's a number of options where you can play it um, just like the Arkham, Arkham Hellhound uh, that we saw in red um, it's really powerful for a low drop if you've got the landfall trigger or multiple landfall triggers so uh, it's definitely worth uh, worth a look in uh, if you're playing a low to the low to the ground deck in standard, um, this one would actually benefit from more fetch lands um, and could sneak into um, a landfall deck. Modern used to have a um, basically a super. Um, a super landfall deck where it was playing all of the cheap landfall creatures <clears throat> in the deck and it was playing as many fetches as it could get with a, a small number of actually f actual fetchable lands um, so it was uh, trying to stack up as many triggers as, as it could get um, at once and hit hard uh, so it might sneak into that deck, um, uh, but I'm only expecting this to be in uh, red, green, aggro decks and standard. All right, cleric of life's bond, white, black for T2 vampire cleric. When another cleric enters, yeah, ETBs gain life. When you gain life for the first time each turn, you put a plus one plus one counter on cleric of life's blood. Bond, excuse me. Um, so there is a, a white black cleric um, deck. Um, you've seen a lot of the pieces that's been put together. Um, the black demon uh, from this set is also a cleric that benefits from the uh, they benefit from each other and then also veto um, benefits. So um, <clears throat> you're going to have um, you've got a good base for a white black Orzhov cleric slash life gain deck uh, that has a, a number of powerful pieces at uh, cheaper costs um, so um, I would be prepared uh, for this, um, as a deck, whether you're playing arena or you're you're playing at your uh, local game store, because um, for the most part, it's going to be fairly cheap to put together. Uh, Veto and then the three mana demon are um, the bigger rares. Of course, there's um, a one mana white 
Vigilance one that makes angels from Corset 2020. Again, these names are escaping me, and I'm not. Tr I'm trying not to look look them up. I'm trying to remember them all from memory. Um, that'll be in this deck, and then you've got the one mana, one mana black uncommon with life link that when it uh, die if it, when it, if it's ever recurred to the battlefield uh, you're gonna get uh, a 5-5 five five demon instead of a 1-1 uh, one one cleric Archfiend's Vessel it's been one of those weeks guys I apologize for my uh lack of card name memory um, but yeah this this slots real well in that deck as, as one of your two drops uh, rack maw skyclave ravager uh, three mana hydra horror uh, it's a zero zero with three plus one plus one counters on it when another creature you control dies, if it had a plus one plus one counter on it, you get to put one on uh, Graxma. When Graxma dies, you get to make a massive green and black Hydra token, where X is the number of counters on Graxma. Again, so this is another push toward the Orzov, I'm sorry, um, the Abzan token build, white green black um, uh, while it doesn't move all your tokens off the creature that died onto him you at least get some um, uh, now if you if you end up playing the ozolith you'll get uh, You'll get to put the counters on there then you'll get a counter on that and yeah it could get nutty um, so basically this set has besides adding other white and green uh, pieces for your counters it's also added black so if you wanted to play it as Orzhov or if you wanted to play an Orzhov version if you wanted to play a Selesnia version, or if you wanted to play it as a Golgari version, you could play all of those, or you could play an Abzad version. I still think I lean toward um, Selesnia because there are previously both white and or green cards that have enough of these abilities that I think I'd want to stay in those colors, but it's interesting that they've given us so many pieces. Uh, Kargan War Leader, uh, three mana, three three. Um, human Warrior, it's a Warrior Lord. Um, if you're a Warrior deck, uh, if you're a Warrior Tribal deck, uh, this is something that you'll be in the market for. Uh, a lot of yours, other Warriors, uh, especially the, the aggressive, cheaper ones, um, are gonna love seeing you curve into this. Um, Normally you'd get a cheaper Lord, and I'm surprised we get a 3-drop Lord instead of a 2-drop Lord. Um, but, uh, I'm certainly not complaining. It's, um, again, depending on how good Warlord uh, Tribal is in, in White Red, which has a ton of those, particularly in this set, but also in previous sets. Um... You know, a cheap, uncommon, um, cheap, uh, I say cheap, but, um, you know, an uncommon lord may be, uh, what you want. Kaza Royal Chaser. So, two mana, one, two, human, uh, legendary human wizard, flying haste, tap ability. Next instant sorcery you cast this turn is X less to cast where X is the number of wizards you control as his ability resolves. Uh, so that's key. If a, if a wizard gets destroyed before you complete this ability, like say it's on the stag, then um, 
it's not going to see that creature. So if you tap this and there's three wizards on the board uh, and your opponent shoots one of them um, in response, then when this resolves, it's only going to see two wizards. Um, first thing I'm going to say is cost reduction, um, free mana, things like that are always dangerous. Um, this one being minus X to cast, uh, not messing with any of the colored mana. Um, most instants or sorceries um, are have colored mana, with a few notable exceptions from um, uh, Zendikar's of, of Magic's past. Uh, so, it's not going to be... Um, it's not going to be broken and give you a free spell, in other words. Um, I think this ability is, is fine. Obviously, it's, a, it's designed to go in Wizards Tribal. Um, I would have to see exactly what type of instants or sorceries we would want in this deck to warrant including this to lower costs. Or let you double triple spell on a turn right um, we've seen uh, goblin electromancer is a 2-2 two, two for 2 that makes your um, instance of sorceries cost one less mana um, and that's been playable in storm decks I don't I necess I don't necessarily think this will see play back into modern um, but I don't know how good the wizard strategy is going that, that far back so um, it's a fine card I I don't really see it making an impact in most uh, in most constructed formats all right Linvala shield of Seagate Three mana, three three, angel wizard flying. Uh, so it's big. <clears throat> so if you get to the beginning of combat with a full party, you get to um, lock down any creature where it can't attack, block, or use any of his activated abilities until the start of your next turn, uh, which is a great ability. But again, it's based on the party mechanic which you may or may not have in any one given game. It's the second ability that I think is most important. Uh, sacrifice Linvala, choose Hexproof for Indestructible, creatures you control, gain that ability till end of turn. So, this is where I think this card will be used. It's in a 3-3 it's a three, three for 3 uh, evasive cr creature that can protect multiple of your creatures. Um, and just all of that together um, screams this is uh, this seems to be playable in a uh, in a standard format um, obviously being an angel wizard it's it's it doesn't really uh, it doesn't fit a ton of tribes in uh, for older formats, but the effect may be good enough that you want to run it in an older format. Uh, Pioneer, I'm just going to say it because uh, that's going to get super outclassed in, uh, in modern really quick. Um, but yeah, you'll probably see this in a, in a standard deck um, coming soon that All right, low mage is uh, familiar. Three mana, two four taps for green or blue. If you cast a kick spell, gain two life. Um, this one's reserved for limited only. Uh, moss pit skeleton. So two mana, two two. If it uh, kick or three, if it was kicked, you get three counters on it. Uh, if one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control, if this is in your graveyard, you can put it on top of your library. So it gives you some recursiveness. Uh, it's either a 2-2 two, two for 2 or a 5-5 five, five for 5. Um, it, 
it uh, it fits the counter steam. But going back on top of your deck is a major detriment because instead of going to your hand or going to play whatever, um, what that does is if it goes to the top of your deck, you're going to be stuck drawing it for your next turn. And if you absolutely need something else, it's not going to... Uh, it's not going to save you. In other words, it's not going to save you. Now, it's a May trigger. Um, and you also may play it in your deck. Um, I <clears throat> Usually, recursive creatures are, are very good. Um, uh, but the, since this one's not coming back uh, to hand or directly into play, I don't know how much this is. we'll see play over... Um, our uh, Skyclave uh, black creature for two mana that lets you recur it for a landfall trigger each turn. Uh, Marasa Rootgazer, two mana, two, three, Vigilant. Uh, you can either tap it to put a basic land in, from your hand on the battlefield or tap it to return a basic land you control to its owner's hand. So, it pulls double duty as either a ramp card. Uh, or as a way to return basic lands to your hand for um, landfall triggers. Um, I misread this card at first thinking you could bounce any land um, which would be which would be stupid good with um, the spell lands or the creature lands that you have where the backside is something uh, useful. Uh, but obviously that's not the case. Um, if you are... I don't necessarily think that the ramp decks will use it. Now, I could be wrong. Uh, but it's a creature and, it, and it's fragile. And most of your other cards are spells that put them directly in play, like Cultivate. Uh... Or um, a four mana one that cycles from uh, Ikoria uh, puts them directly into play, um, but this gives a little versatility as it's a two three with vigilance, so you can attack and block with it, and still use the ability. Um, I think the aggressive version of the deck is red green. Uh, but the um, more long game um, or mid game version is in white green. Uh, so this this seems perfectly fine. Instead of actually ramping with a creature, you're putting you're putting lands into play, which trigger um, trigger your your landfall stuff. All right, so. The next two are Planeswalkers, uh, Nahiri, Heir of the Ancients. So I originally was questioning whether this card was good enough or not. Um, four mana for a four loyalty. Uh, plus one, you get to make a, a core warrior token, and you can attach an equipment to it that's in play. Uh, the minus two lets you dig for a warrior or equipment card. Uh, in the top six, and the minus three uh, deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equals twice the number of equipment you control. Um, so obviously this fits in a warrior deck, an equipment deck, or some combination of both. Um, it makes a token that can protect itself, right? Um, Re-equipping or moving a piece of equipment to a token uh, seems fine. Um, you're in the two colors uh, that have the best equipment uh, overall. Um, Embercleave, particularly. Uh, Maw of the Skyclaves is really good for three mana. So, um, those both fit. Um... 
it can help you dig for both of those pieces, but it also lets you dig for a, a warrior, and then the particular warrior that I'm thinking of is Wynonna. Uh, now, they do have the same converted mana cost, both four. Um, but you're producing tokens which are not humans, which help Wynonna <clears throat> trigger... which helps you end the game faster. Uh, so I believe that there is some combination of a deck uh, involving Nahiri, Winona, Embercleave, probably Maul of the, uh, the Skyclaves, um, and other warriors, um, human or otherwise. Um, so uh, this is a, um, this is a bolo be on the lookout uh i don't think she's broken but she certainly helps the consistency uh and it helps you make the tokens that you that you actually want with winona to help you trigger the ability more um and getting to move the equipment to it or move it or equipment around is the uh, gravy all right nissa the shadowed burrows so uh two black green so this is the first black greenness that we've seen. We've seen a black blue one previously. Uh, four loyalty has a landfall trigger that lets you put a loyalty counter on her. It has a plus one untapped target land. Get may make it a three three elemental creature with haste and menace until end of turn. Uh, so it makes a more aggressive creature rather than a defensive one. Uh, the minus five lets you put a creature card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of lands you control onto the battlefield from your hand or graveyard with two plus one plus one counters on it. So there's a lot of players saying that this Nissa is broken. Um, just like her previous version. Um, I'm going to say this. I don't think she is... I don't think she is broken, at least not in the standard format. Um, so if you play around four, after you played your land for the turn, um, you can use the plus one and untap the land you don't have to make it a creature. Um, you can just use it to untap a land so you've got open mana to help protect uh, Nyssa. Uh, and go to five counters and then pass the turn. Hope <clears throat> that the spell that you're able to play off the one mana that you untapped um, keeps Nyssa from... Um, losing any loyalty counters then the next turn you can landfall trigger go to six you'll have five mana in play you can minus five to re recur or play a five converted mana cost creature and give it two plus one counters uh, now that creature can p protect Nissa and I think what is different about this format than previous formats is the fact that Wizards has been more willing to print cards that deal with Planeswalkers in one way or another in the last few sets. Um, and that means that a card like this doesn't get out of hand and that's very important uh, previously you might have a rare uh, or two plus burn spells that would help you deal with planeswalker and maybe an enchant a white enchantment now almost every color has a way to deal with a planeswalker in one way or another um, and now there are multiple spells that can deal with planeswalker so to be, this is a very good card. It is, it's high powered, but I do not believe that this one is broken. 
and standard. Um, now, you might can do some interesting shenanigans in some older formats. Um, I mean, I could do some broken stuff if, if fast bond was legal, but um, I don't see that one happening. So, um, I'm going to enjoy playing this Nissa, uh, but I don't think it's near the power level of the Nissa that we had previously. Uh, plus, it is much easier for us to deal with this Nissa um, now than it was to deal with the Nissa who shakes the world previously. Alright, so this Omneth is dumb to dumb 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 and what I mean by that is uh, holy crap can this do some do some crap so it's it's gained white mana it's also gained an additional arm uh, as you can notice for the artwork uh, still legendary still elemental 4-4 uh, when an ETB draw a card so the landfall trigger um, if it's the first time each turn you gain 4 life if it's the second time, you get one of each of its colors of mana. If it's the third time, you deal four damage to each opponent and each planeswalker you don't control. Um, so, this thing's going to be noxious with fetch lands in modern. Uh, not saying that it's going to be broken in modern, but, you know, think about this. Um... You could technically you know you could technically play uh, Bird of Paradise or uh, Noble Hierarch on turn one. Uh, turn a hypothetical. Um, turn two you could play a um, Sylvan carry added. Trying to think of it. Uh, the zero three hex proof for taps for any uh, defender taps for one man of any color. Um, so now you have four mana in play. On turn four, you can play uh, Omnath. Uh, draw a card. Play your land. Gain four life. Um, Pass the turn. The, on so that's turn three. Turn four. Uh, you play a land, gain four life. You've got one man of any color in your mana pool. Um, that land that you played was a fetch land. You, yeah, you use the fetch land, get another mana, gives you another mana. So you've got you now have six men in the pool. This four plus two lowest cult per triggers, and you've got three more mana to use between the high arc and the two. Oh, the three other lands in play. You have ten mana. You could play Ugin on this on this turn. Um, you can play Karn Liberated. You, uh, you can also play Ugin um, with ease. So you can go from four mana. To dang near ten mana. Uh, I'm not saying it's it's um, not saying it's going to be a perfect uh, perfect scenario. Um, I'm saying Lotus Cobra should know better. I, I played the Sylvan Curie added, but there's there's some interesting interactions and craziness that you can do with this, particularly in formats that actually have fetch lands. Now, is it broken enough for that? Uh, some pe people think that it is. Um, I think this card is going to be just very annoying. Even though 4-4 four four is not very hard to deal with. Uh, I think it's going to be annoying to see. Because it's actually easier to cast than you think. With that mana cost. Uh, Aura, Skyclave, 
Hierophant. So this is also the buybacks promo that has different art. They finally went back to the, the alt art uh, buy box promos instead of uh, unique promos. Thank the good lord. Uh, so this is a uh, interesting cleric. Now beyond the commander um, thought process because he's definitely a cleric, uh, a rare, legendary cleric. Uh, for your commander deck, for your uh, commander, um, three through for four is fine. Life links fine. When he, when it or another cleric control dies, you can return a target cleric with lesser converted mana cost from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, so you kill him, you get veto back. Um, you kill veto, you get. Um, Cleric of Light's Bond back. So the the chain the, the chain is unending. Uh, you kill the cleric, you get an uh, an Archfiend's vessel back, which turns into a five five demon. Uh, you see where I'm going with this, right? Um, cleric Tribal has a lot of pieces uh, that all have great inner workings together. Um, again, is it? Is it format defining? Uh, my guess is no, but I did have seen some of the white black clear, um, life gain decks uh, post core 2021, and there's some ridiculous draws that they had, and some craziness that goes on. So I wouldn't put it past them. Uh, Faylath World Sculptor. So Avenger of Zendikar was in World Wake. And it was a 5-5 five five that made a bunch of 0-1 um, green plant tokens equal to the number of basic uh, number of lands you controlled. And then every time you hit the landfall trigger happened, you gave a passed out a plus one plus one counter to each of them. Uh, so this one only triggers on basic land um, for putting the plants into play. And instead of it going to all of your plants, this one stacks four of the, puts four of those on a plant you control. Uh, so this one goes tall rather than going wide. Um, our uh, six drop green elemental that lets you play lands from the graveyard that double up your landfall triggers. Um, I could uh, definitely see these two being best buds. Um, just saying. Um, it'd probably make an interesting commander too. Um, I doubt we'll see him in older formats. This looks like maybe something you want to play with in standard and that's going to be about it. Uh, Ravager's Mace. So this is another auto-equip. Um, th uh, three mana. Auto-equips. Uh, it gets creature. gets plus one, plus O oh for each creature in your party and has menace. So this one is the most la lackluster of the equipments, uh, in my opinion. Just because it's party is is so hard to get right all the time uh, the menace is fine and if you get a plus two plus O, oh, then you're getting at the value um, I don't know how well that um, fits in those colors as far as what you want to play uh, to get it down you know, if this was a reg regular equipment that didn't auto attach, I would probably not even look at this a second time and just pass it. Um, okay, so we were talking about black blue rogues earlier um, in both the blue and the black section. So, wearing Thought Thief is a card that is a glue that uh, is a very important piece to this deck. 
uh, not only the draft archetype but also the um, the constructed deck uh, being flash flying uh, gives a, a uh, uh, power bonus to all your rogues if you meet the eight or more cards in opponent's graveyard condition uh, and then you have the um, when one or more rogues you control attacks each opponent mills two cards so if the rogue deck is viable you're gonna have this guy that's going to basically let you even if your opponent Uros or Croxes out of the graveyard and exiles five cards plus plays the spell for six if you've got four creatures out four uh, rogues out and they all attack the next turn their graveyards back to eight cards again it's going to trigger the bonus again and there's no no telling how much more you're going to get out of it um, if you're in rogues uh, you'll be playing this uh, spoils of adventure um, six mana gain three life draw three cards uh, instant cost one less for each creature in your party uh, I feel that this card is only playable in uh, limited six mana to, to gain three life draw three cards it's not a bad rate uh, it is in ors off colors which uh, is usually the the colors you're going to be playing something like this in uh, and being able to get it cheaper if you have the other uh, creature types is good um, but I don't know how much um, an Azorius deck wants a six mana card that draws them three cards and gains them three life the three life doesn't seem like it's relevant enough especially compared to Uro you're playing Uro drawing a card gaining three life you play another Uro the next turn you're doing the same thing um, for half that much mana you're gaining three life and drawing one card um, again I think Uro is an outlying case but um, I don't really see this seeing a lot of, of uh, constructed play. Um, Umara Mystic. Uh, so this is a, a signpost card for the uh, wizard deck. Um, now we've seen cards similar to this see some standard play before. Um, And you, um, you do have the right uh, non-basic lands to um, play it in your deck, so it's possible, but uh, it's not one that um, it's not one that I would ex that I'm expecting to see in a standard deck. Um, Vera Versal, the Split Current. So this is a massive serpent that you can um, um, that you can play. Now the um, it again has a, a kicker ability where you can remove counters from it to copy a kicker a kick spell. Uh, again, I. I don't see enough usable um, kicker spells uh, in the format where this is um, something that's viable. I actually don't like to shrink my creatures. I like for them to uh, remain big. Um, So, could be interesting as a commander for a kicker deck, uh, although I probably would have preferred him 
to either be a salt eye or a teamer uh, colors. Yarshan and placeable earth. Uh, so power and toughness to casting cost ratio is good. Um, he let or it lets you pull out a, a basic forest and basic plains out of your deck, uh, which is great both for for your landfall deck as well as um, shrinking your deck size. Um, if you're playing him in standard, you're probably playing him. If you're if you're playing this guy, you're probably playing him for his additional ability of players can't pay life and sac or they can't sacrifice non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities. Uh, so he's basically a hoser. Um, now, if you can't pay life, oddly enough, even though this is a four mana spell, again, um, you can't activate fetch lands. Um, which is uh, an interesting thought. And I mean the Onslaught and Zendikar fetches, not the um, Fable Passage. Um, so this is right up the alley of players who like to play uh, um, creatures that mess with your opponent's stuff. Sargas, Thief of Heartbeats. Uh, so he's a little expensive for his cost. Flying Death Touch Haste and other creatures you have control have Death Touch is it's great. Uh, when a creature you control deals combat damage to a Planeswalker, destroy that Planeswalker. Um, so whatever it bites is dying. Um, having the cost reduction for party um, seems fine because then if you have one other if you have one party member in play uh, already he's five mana for a four four with all that is actually a good rate if you get cheaper than that then awesome um, Uh, speaking of auto include and rogue deck, um, th this is another one that that screams playing rogues. Uh, so this guy basically has ninjutsu, uh, which is an old ability that lets you swap a creature in play for um, an attacking ninja. In this case, it's an attacking rogue. Uh, and except uh, and it, Xanrath swap places uh, and when he hits an opponent um, you get to return a permanent card from their graveyard to the battlefield on under your control uh, so it's blatant thievery uh, literally um, and since you're milling all of those cards off your opponent's deck then um, being able to steal what you want is actually a good thing Oh, you've only seen one Uro this game, and it's in the graveyard after I milled it. Yeah, let me have that. All right, on to the um, the artifacts. Uh, so here's another piece of equipment. Uh, no bonuses except flying. Um, I believe this one is uh, limited fodder only. Uh, Forsaken monument. Um, so who here likes Eldrazi? Um, so this does a lot for five mana. Uh, but I don't know how many, um, I don't know how many, um, decks in because it's not playable in standard uh, unless you're playing um, unless, you're, unless you're playing an all, all artifact deck 
I originally read that number is three instead of five at the top, which would have made it oh so broken. Um, well, not broken, but Anthem effects are normally cheaper. Um, um, but oddly enough, I've seen more expensive cards see play in constructed formats that I didn't expect to either. So the question is, is this powerful enough? A double anthem effect, a um, a um, mana flare effect for colorless mana, and then gains you life when you cast colorless spells. <clears throat> All right, lithoform engines. So I see this car. Uh, the first thing, the the artwork for this kind of reminds me of the uh, Meditation Chamber of Darth Vader. So, um, that's pretty neat. Um, so this lets you basically copy anything in the game. Uh, activate your triggered abilities, instance or sorceries, or any permanent spell. So that would be creature, artifact, enchantment. Planeswalker. The only problem is if you copy that, then they're both legendary and one of them's got to die. Um, so. I just don't know how much constructed application you're going to see this with, but I'll tell you one thing right now. You will see this at a commander table. Uh, Myriad Construct. So this is a 4-4 that um, you can kick, and if you kick it, um it gets additional it gets a plus one plus one counters for each non-basic land your opponent controls when this creature becomes the target of a spell sacrifice it and create a number of plus one plus or one one colorless construct artifact creature tokens uh equal to its power so basically if your opponent tries to rem tries to remove it with a spell or tries to target with a spell of any sort it uh, blows itself up and makes a bunch of weenies. Um, that's actually quite resilient uh, and quite brilliant at the same time. Um, I could see this thing standard play. Um, I can, might could even see it play in, uh, some play in Pioneer. Um, I don't know if that does if it does enough to see play in anything else. Unless we're talking about Vintage, because you can play this on turn two in Vintage. Uh, thanks, Mistress Workshop. Uh, Relic Amulet. So, this is uh, one of the signpost cards for Wizards. Um, uh, in uh, Limited or Draft, it's fine there. I'm not going to see any constructed play. Uh, Relic Axe. So, this one is... A uh, fine piece of equipment for um, uh, for a warrior stack. Basically, a, um, in a warrior stack, it's uh, it gives a free. It's a free equip. It's plus two, plus one, or plus one, plus one. Um, so this one's a little better than the the red common one we saw earlier that auto equips because it's plus two, plus zero. Oh. But this one's conditional based on the creature type. Uh, Relic Golem. So, this is the 3 mana 6 6 that Mark Rosar was talking about. Um, it seems to be fine. Um, it has the same trigger as the, um, uh, as the Rogues. Um, can't attack or block unless they have 8 or more cards in their graveyard. Uh, has a built in mill. Uh, while it can't attack or block, um, trying to get through all of that to get there. Um, I just see the rogues uh, as more efficient overall for what they're trying to do. Uh, Relic Vial. Now, I, I m you might see this one in, um, in standard. Um, Uh, particularly in the cleric deck, 
but it it's one of those cards that does nothing usually the turn it comes into play except maybe um, uh, use the uh, triggered ability when your clerics die to ping your opponent gain life for you uh, which obviously also works with veto to help you uh, help drain your opponent more um, the casting cost plus the activate activation of the ability may be too much for it to see standard play um, but it does basically give you in a cleric based deck a way to help uh, uh, dome your opponent and keep your life total above uh, death uh, so this is basically a payoff card for party um, uh, at common you can cast this for three mana if you have a full party uh, that's a standard no uh, sky clay relic okay so this one's interesting three mana for a um, dark a um, dark steel relic um, or if you pay six mana you get um, um, three copies of it um, or you get two copies plus the original so you either get one for three mana or three of them for six mana um, this I think this one really depends on if you want um, artifact mana or if you want more lands or it, or if you want lands uh, to be played um, uh, to ramp up into with cultivate etc but being indestructible actually is quite a boon uh, for you so um, this this may be non land ramp card uh, definitely interesting uh, to try out see what might you might could build for it uh, skyclave sentinel so this is another one that is um, based on counters uh, it's a fine limited card nothing more uh, spare supplies uh, so you get to draw a card when there's a battlefield. You get to draw a card when you sacrifice it via its ability. Um, I've heard some players talk about this in Pauper, but I really don't know if it's going to see any play outside of that. Uh, Stonework Pack Beast. Uh, okay, so this is a color fixer uh, that also counts as each different creature type. Uh, again, this is great for limited because it lets you. Uh, have all the pieces that you need um, as well as fix your mana uh, even though it's going to cost you an extra mana to fix it but uh, um, not really constructed worthy uh, utility knife so this is a cheap plus one plus one that auto equips um, again don't know how much in the market how many pieces of equipment you're in the market for uh, this one's fine, but I like most of the colored uh, artifact ones um, and the um, the one that is uh, for warrior tribal um, as well as your rares um, more than I like this. All right, and we're finally in the home stretch. So there are three non-basic lands that are not double face cards. Um, I have a complaint about base camp. So you're already having enough trouble putting the party together uh, in um, whether that be limited or standard. Why well, have this card enter the battlefield tapped? You know, for me, I think that's poor design. You're already limiting what you can cast with the colored section or what you can use the colored mana for. It should just go ahead and enter the battlefield untapped. Um, in that regard, it, 
you know, if there's a party deck, this does help you fix your mana, even if it is a little slow. Um, um, and it's fine for limited also if you're running, you know, multiple color um, party deck. It's the same thing there. Uh, it's a little slow, but it's perfectly fine to help you fix things. Uh, Crawling Barons. Okay, this one is one I expect to see at many tables. Uh, so it only taps for colorless. That part's fine. For colorless, you get to put two plus one plus one counters on it. And then you can choose to have it become a zero zero elemental creature until end of turn. So for your ramp decks that you've ramped up past the, the amount of mana that you need to cast all your relevant spells you've got extra mana laying around uh, this is great to pump this pump this creature up um, getting it ready for when you decide it's time to turn it sideways um, control decks I expect control decks to play this um, in in some number because again it lets you play a threat that your opponent can interact with but it's a lot harder uh, and you can just make it bigger and bigger and bigger so like red spells can't deal with it it's too big to be fought in in green etc um, so I've always enjoyed man lands or lands with a lot of utility this absolutely has that uh, and it'll be good to turn a, uh, a land sideways attacking um, the last non double face card rare um, is another one that requires a little hoop jumping through for kicker um, again I don't I think that the all the pieces for the kicker deck didn't really come together at least in this set overall I think it had some nice pieces to um, to the kicker um, items in older formats um, and I, I don't mind the charge counters um, but it's just a little extra hoop to have to jump through uh, I think they were worried about an um, Eldrazi temple issue that we had previously um, I think I would have felt better if, if, if it said tap put a charge counter on it instead of paying one and tap and doing it um, Where this would kind of make it like Mirrodin's core, um, but you could only use the colored mana on kick spells. All right, the double face lands. Um, I think this is both interesting design and wonderful cards. Um, I'm sad that we did just didn't get the uh, all ten of the lands in this set. Um, because we only got six of the lands um, that's funny we got three allied pairs and three enemy pairs we got green white we got blue black and we got red green as the allied pairs and then the last we've got blue red uh, red white and white black as the enemy pairs um, so if you need land, dual lands that come into play untapped in this format um, you're going to be playing these um, if you're playing a two color deck that fits one of these color combinations or if you're playing a three color deck that has multiple pairs of these you're going to be playing those um, the only major drawback to these lands is the fact is once you've played it on one side you're stuck with that side unless you have a way to return that land or lands to your opponent's hand or to your hand excuse me so 
be prepared that that decision tree is going to be real interesting at times. Where maybe this is the only green mana or black mana that you draw in a whole game. Uh, and you have the choice. Do I... <clears throat> I've got let's say let's say I've got a bunch I got several spells that could double white my hand I could play this to get my um, to make sure I had the double white uh, but if I start drawing green cards and I still don't have any green green lands I'm gonna really screw myself so um, be prepared for those long discussions in your mind about uh, going into the tank and figuring this out um, but that is the full review for Zendikar Rising uh, it it's nice to go back to a a little less of a power trip that we've had for the past uh, year plus uh, and the set looks fun to uh, design decks with play with right now uh, hopefully nobody will absolutely break it wide open in the first you know, couple of weeks um, but I think there are less full-on broken cards in this set than what we saw previously, uh, which gives me hope um, for what the next year of Magic is going to look like. Um, so, again, my name is Brad. I'm the owner of Alternate Dimensions in Tullahoma, Tennessee. Uh, you'll notice there's a code at the bottom of the screen. Uh, if you go to our website, adgaming.net, uh, you can use the promo code 5th Dimension for 5% off any order of $5 or more. Um, uh, check us out over the weekend. I will be uh, opening some uh, pre release kits on stream and building sealed decks, uh, showing you the thought processes that I'm uh, using. Uh, to uh, put the decks together um, and how I approach it um, so uh, check that out don't forget to like subscribe and click the notification bell so you know when new videos have been uploaded uh, we are your dimension for fun and we'll see you in the next one